looking for some really fun holiday games that you can play with your family and you're wondering what are some materials I can get from the Dollar Tree that could cost me less than ten dollars to have this fun then you're in the right place because today I'm gonna give you five Dollar Tree minute to win it holiday games that also help with math skills <laughs> Nice to meet you. Here on Everything Aja, I help you teach your little one by giving you fun games, simple activities, and good old early childhood development. If that sounds like you, then go ahead and like, subscribe, and click the bell. So we're all about having fun the simple way. So today we're gonna go ahead and go to our local Dollar Tree store because I'm gonna give you five really fun minute to win it Dollar Tree games that help develop our basic math skills. Once you're at the Dollar Tree, you will need a few items. Like I stated earlier, this won't cost you more than $10. The first thing you're gonna pick up is a really cute elf. Now I grabbed this really cute elf. I thought he was just adorable. But if your local Dollar Tree store has something different that you wanna get, just go ahead and pick you up an elf. Next, you will need a really cute elf basket. They have elf baskets, Santa baskets. You could even get a play basket. Doesn't matter, but you will need a plain basket. You will also need to go pick up some nice ping pong balls. Sometimes Dollar Trees actually have the ping pong balls kind of on the side of aisles, so make sure you look all around the toy section for these. Now I recommend picking up three to four packs of ping pong balls because you're gonna wanna have some fun. Now in the Christmas section, you should see some good old candy canes. I recommend getting one or two packs. For this video, you'll see I use two packs of candy canes. If you just wanna use one pack, that's perfectly fine as well. You will also need to pick up one bag of bows. Now, if you have a lot of people in your house or a lot of kids in your classroom, maybe you need more than one bag. For me, I only use one bag. Now, this next thing is optional, but in the teacher section at the Dollar Tree, you will see this really cute green timer. I know this is a little extra, but it just adds to the holiday fun to get a green timer. You can also just simply use your phone, but if you wanna just go all out, go ahead and pick up this green timer. So once you have your bows, your ping pong balls, your elf, your timer, your basket, and your candy canes, go ahead and check out, and you are ready to go have some fun. Our first game is called the Elf Toss, and what you will do is sit your elf inside your elf basket and sit that along the wall. Next, you will grab all the ping pong balls and you are ready to play this game one person at a time. During each person's turn, you will turn over the timer and that person must simply throw the balls into the basket. Now you set the difficulty level to this game by either having the person move closer or further away from the basket. The first time that everybody plays this round, they are facing the basket and they're trying to see who can actually score the most balls in the basket within that one minute. After each person's turn, it is that person's job to go ahead and count how many balls they made into the basket. This helps with counting one-on-one -on -one correspondence. After everybody has gone, then you are going to see who had the most balls in their basket for round one. Now you're actually able to compare and contrast and kids are able to see who had the most balls in the basket. Then you're ready for round two. During round two, you're gonna leave the setup the exact same. Go ahead and flip the timer. Only instead of the person facing the basket, each person must face away from the basket and simply toss the balls behind their back or over their shoulder. This makes the game more challenging and sets up for a really fun round two. After everybody has gone using their one minute, once again at the end of each person's turn, they're gonna simply count and see how many balls they made into the basket and who had the most balls in the basket. Then you will add up how many balls each person got in round one and round two. Now we're making the kids add a little bit. Then whoever had the most balls all together wins the game. Woo! That was a lot of counting. All right, so now we are ready for game number two. In game number two, you only need the bowls you just bought at the Dollar Tree. You might even have some more bowls at home. Who knows, it's Christmas time. What you would do is simply pour the bowls in the middle. Now, if you don't want people kind of cross contaminating the bowls, go ahead and individually give everybody the same amount of bowls. Then, just like all these games, you'll simply flip over your green timer and during each person's turn, they are trying to stack their bowls. 
Everybody goes at the same time and the object of this game is to build the biggest bow stack. There is no real rules to how your stacks must be except the fact that there's only one stack that you create. This game is really challenging. Y'all wouldn't believe how difficult it is to actually stack bows and it made for a really fun game. At the end of the timer, everybody will see one who had the tallest bows. That's just to add some math in there. But the winner is the one who used the most bows without having their bow stack fall over. So of course you're gonna see how many bows each person put in their stack and of course whose stack was the tallest. In game number three you are going to pull out your candy canes and this game is called the candy cane stack and it's really simple and very difficult actually. Each person will start off by having one candy cane in their hand. When you turn over the minute to win a timer each person is going to see how many candy canes they can get to link on their one candy cane that they started with. It's really complicated and a person is automatically out if they break their candy cane. Ha <laughs> ha So that's like the difficult part because you don't want to break the candy cane and it's really hard to get these candy canes to link. And of course at the end of the timer everybody counts up to see how many candy canes they can actually get to link on this one candy cane and whoever has the most candy canes wins. And since we have our candy canes out, let's just go ahead and jump into game number four. And game number four is called the Cane Toss. Yes, so you will need your candy canes and also that beautiful elf basket that you had before. All right, so what you will do, you will have two people. You will have one person whose turn it is actually have all the candy canes in their arms. The opposing person will be on the other side of that person and they will actually hold the basket. Now. The only thing that that opposing person can do is move the basket horizontally. So that means they're only moving the basket from left to right. They are not wanting the person to actually toss the candy cane into the basket because of course they want to win and it's each man for himself. But they can't move the basket vertically. They can only move it horizontally. So that really limits that opposing person because they can only move the basket left to right. So during each person's turn, you're gonna go ahead and flip the timer and each person has one minute to toss as many candy canes as they can into the basket. And of course, at the end of your turn, you'll go ahead and count up how many candy canes you successfully got in the basket and whoever had the most candy canes win. There's a lot of simple counting used in these games. Now, I am in the middle of a 12 games of Christmas playlist. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. I am trying to hook you guys up for the holidays, okay? And I am partnering with Sean Howell. She's amazing. If you've never heard of her, definitely check out her video. I'll have the link down below in the description and also right here to the playlist. And in that playlist, we are giving you some really fun games, both in person and online. So make sure you check out that playlist. And before we jump into game number five, let me know down below in the comments. I want to know what are you doing for the Christmas holidays? I love hearing about you all's holidays and what you guys do as a classroom or a family. So let me know down below in the comments, what are you doing for your holiday season? I would love to know. All right, so let's jump into game number five. And our last game is called the Bowl Yes. The bow blow. That was a little articulation in there. Bow blow. Bow blow. Can you say bow blow three times? Bow blow 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 blow. Bow blow bow blow blow blow. Bow blow 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 blow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's really fun. You should you should do that. So with the bow blow game, you will need some sort of hard floor space to play the game. So you can do the hallway of a school or the hallway of your house or even your kitchen floor, wherever it is, you will need some sort of hardwood floor place to actually play the game. What you will do is mark your ending spot. So I suggest marking it with a candy cane since you already have candy cane. Then you're going to use rulers to go ahead and measure four feet away from your candy cane. This way you're adding a little bit of measurement into your holiday season. Once each person has measured four feet away from their designated candy cane, they will simply place one of the bows right there. And that is their starting place. With everybody on the floor, the object of the game is to be the first one to actually blow your bow 
all the way to your candy cane. Y'all, and my brother cheated with this game because he definitely like elbowed me all the way to the wall. Foul! If you're not a member of this wonderful community already, then make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to definitely check out this playlist where I'm